Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam He was encouraging people to to bear patience and patience we know it's not an easy thing to experience we can talk about patience hours and hours but when we land in a real life situations when you have to either act wisely or you go madly you know which one you go you have to act with patience or you can go wild so the time when you given such a choice is really hard really hard on the heart to choose for patience it's really hard yes to have a patience you should be having some difficulties in your time without a difficulty how can you have a patience how can you have patience in the lack of difficulty so when you are suffering something you need to understand allah is throwing in front of me some chances opportunities where i can benefit from if you have some friends who back by to you who sends really nasty things on the facebook or on the social media for example and really you know teasing irritating you you're not responding back you're not sending any text back you are given a chance to prove that you are ma'asabirin with those who bear patience are you patient prove it allah is giving you time you can you can imagine these situations in in any other you know areas of your life where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you time that prove you are a patient وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah is with those who bear patience. A Sahabiya, Rasulullah's companion, as she was a woman, yes, she, uh, when she was working back home, she cut her finger and it was bleeding. And there was a maid servant and, and she was watching it and the woman, Sahabiya, she was smiling. She said, the servant, uh, she said, the maid servant, she said, Wow, you cut your finger, blood's coming out, and yet you smile. Don't you feel pain? She said, ذَكَرْتُ حَلَاوَةَ أَجْرِ الصُّبَرْ فَأَنْسَانِي مِرَارَةَ أَلَمِ When I knew that Allah is going to give me reward for this suffering, when I, when I thought of the sweetness of the rewards that Allah is going to give me, I have forgotten the pain of my hand. I'll I forgot. I, I no longer, you know, I no longer get the bitterness of this pain because I'm thinking of the sweetness of the reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A minor musibah. We come to another situation. Hassan al-Basri radiallahu anhu, he was giving lecture. He was giving uh, his lecture and he was teaching his disciples. There um, a man came and whispered in, the, in, the heart, in his ear. Whispered something, he continued his speech. He continued his lesson. After one hour he finished. When people were about to go, he said, would you please wait? Allah gave death to my child. This is a word he used. Allah razaqani al-mawt fi ibni. It's like Allah, Allah made my child die. You know? But he used the word Allah gave death to my child. And he's being washed now back home. The janazah will be in in a few minutes. So would you mind? If you would stay a little bit until we can all pray janazah for my child, then we can go and then they all read it. When the man whispered in the ear of Hassan al-Basri, his face didn't change. He didn't even show that something, a bitter news came to him. He did not even show to his audience and he got, that he got a really sad news. He didn't say that. He just continued as normal. You cannot imagine someone gets his finger cut and someone losing his child. Every musibah, every calamity that we face in our life is in between these two ends. It's like a hand being cut, a finger being some cut and losing your beloved. 
If this is the situation, how a believer would face the situation. Everything in his life is good for him. Everything is good. Everything is good. Hatta shauka yushakuha. When you have a thorn going into your feet, you hit somewhere, right? You bang your head somewhere by mistake. You get fever, you get cold, cough, anything. Hatta al-hamma wal gham. Not only that, depression, sadness, sorrows, grief, all these are going to be rewarded. You'll be getting rewards. Man, people would, re, would be, uh, you know, would wish on the day of judgment, Oh Allah, had I suffered all my life, I would have got not many good deeds in my kitab, in my booklets, had I suffered all those things. But you tested me with only few things, I have suffered and I can see the results. Ibn Abbas one of the great companions of prophets, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned that Ajibutu Liman Ubutuliabil Khofi Minan Nas. I'm giving you something that we can um, we can uh, use in our life, and inshaAllah Allah will remove all the hardships from our life. If you got some pens um, and pencil, if you can take down the surahs, um, the ayat, that would be really great. <coughs> Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala and he mentions Ajibutu, I'm just wondering I'm wondering Limanubutuliya bil khawfi min al nas Kaifa yaghfulu an qawlillahi azza wa jal Hasbun Allah wa ni'ma al wakeel if anyone is concerned, is anyone who is concerned is fear, he is fearing someone, right? If you have fear, why should you be worried? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ نِعْمَ فَانْقَلَبُوا بِنِعْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ This is Surah Ali Imran, verse number 174. And Ibn Abbas رضي الله عنه says, Don't you see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned after that? I'm reciting the ayah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. الَّذِينَ قَالَ لَهُمُ النَّاسُ إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ فَخْشَوْهُمْ فَخْشَوْهُمْ فَزَادَهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ فَانْقَلَبُوا بِنِعْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَفَضْلٍ لَمْ يَمْسَسْهُمْ سُوءٍ وَاتَّبَعُوا رِضْوَانَ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ ذُو فَضْلٍ عَظِيمٍ Surah Al-Imran 174 If your concern is fear, that is one of the things that Allah may test us. See what Allah says. الَّذِينَ قَالْ لَهُمُ النَّاسِ إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ فَخْشَوْهُمْ When some of the disbelievers told the Muslims, when they were going for a war, that beware Muslims, your enemies are well equipped, and they're going to fight you fiercely, and you will be defeated. So, fakshawhum, fear them. They are well equipped. You know, you know, well equipped. So, fear them. Muslims didn't fear. Fazadahum imana. It didn't increase nothing but great faith in the heart of the believers. They said, we have nothing to fear. Waqalu, they said. حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is enough for us. وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ He is the best one that we can rely on. حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ When they said, حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ This is the, if you have something to fear, that you're fearing, or oh, this may going to happen, or oh, my manager going to act, you know, behave me like that, or he going to... In the top me days, or he gonna, you know, do this to me. I'm afraid what's gonna happen, and I'm afraid what I'm face. Don't worry. If your concern is fear, 
Say, Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Repeatedly say it. Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu mentions, how come man whose concern is fear, he is, he is um, heedless of the ayah in Quran. When some people were, you know, afraid, you know what they said. They said, Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. And don't they see what Allah said after that? When they said, Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil, what did Allah do? فَانْقَلَبُوا بِنِعْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَفَضْلِ These believers, they left with amazing blessings and bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَمْ يَمْسَسْهُمْ سُوءٍ No harm touched them. وَاتَّبْعُوا رِضْوَانَ اللَّهِ And they followed the mercy and pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you say, حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ And you believe in the heart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's alone, He's alone, He's going to help me in this situation. He's going to remove all the hardships from my way. And I'm relying upon Him. If you say that, you will be returning with blessings and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he continues, Ajibtu, I'm wondering, If someone's concern is sorrow and tension, depression, if your concern is depression, How would you be heedless of Allah? Where Allah says, لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين. ألم يعلم بأن الله قال بعدها جون ديسيد الله what Allah said after that فاستجبنا له we gave him answer ونجيناه من الغم and we have saved him that is Yunus عليه الصلاة والسلام from الغم from the depression from the sorrow. From the grief that he had when he was, you know, kept in the belly of a fish, uh, when he was thrown, and you know the story of Yunus alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah says this one in Surah Al Anbiya, verse number seven, eighty-seven and eighty-eight. Surah Al Anbiya, verse eighty-seven and eighty-eight. If you have tension, depression, sorrow, grief, unrest. That you feel unhappy. If that is your concern, say repeatedly, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-dhalimin. This is the dhikr invocation that Sayyidina Yunus alayhi salatu wasalam said while he was in the belly of, of the fish or whale, um, when he was kept inside, he read it for about 40 days. Then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him that the fish came ashore and he was thrown out. And you know the stories, the story is mentioned in more than one place in Quran. Here the ayah is in Surah Al-Anbiya. Allah said to Yunus alayhi salatu wasalam, When he went, when he left the city of Nineveh, Mughalib, when he was angry that Yunus was sent to Nineveh, the city in Iraq, and when his people did not listen to him, he left the country thinking that Allah would send down his punishment. So he didn't want to be one among them who is going to be punished by Allah. So he left the city but before he gets the permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَظَنَّ أَن لَّن نَّقْدِرَ عَلَيْهِ فَنَادَى فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ فَنَادَى فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ When he was thrown into the sea and he was swallowed by a whale, he kept on reciting this thing in the darknesses. 
Dhulimat is plural. In English we don't use darknesses, but in Arabic it's plural. Dhulimat, the darkness of the sea, the darkness of the night, the darkness of the belly of the fish. In total darkness upon darkness, he read. What did he read? What did he read? La ilaha illa O Allah. There is no one worthy of worship but you. Subhanak, you are exalted. Inni kuntu min I have definitely wronged myself. I did wrong Allah. I did wrong Allah. And you are the worship, worthy of worship. I believe in you. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min When he read these verses, what did Allah do? Fastajabina Allah. We gave him answer. And we have saved him from the depression, from the extreme sorrowness. We have saved him from the sorrow and we have relieved him. And likewise, we will be saving all the believers. So if, you, if your concern is sorrow and grief, say, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al Allah will give an exit, leave you an exit from any type of calamities that would cause you this concern. Again continues Ibn Abbas Ajibtu, I'm wondering, Liman bil marad, if somebody has sickness, illness, somebody is diseased, Kayfa yaghfulu an qawlillah, how he is heedless of Allah's word. Rabbi inni masani al-murru wa anta arhamur rahimin. Why man doesn't read this one? Rabbi inni masani al-murru. Oh Allah, I'm afflicted with, I'm afflicted with calamity Allah. Wa anta arhamur rahimin. And you are the best of the merciful. Alam ya'lam anna Allah qala ba'daha. Don't people see that what Allah said after that? This is the dua said by Ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam. The one before we said that was said by Yunus alayhi salatu wasalam. Here, Ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam, he had a sickness, illness, where our historians say that he was totally abandoned, you know, left out from his society, that nobody would um, approach him but his wife. Her name was Rahma. And she was the only one who looked after him. Rest all of the society just uh, did a boycott to him because he was uh, suffering such a epidemic disease, and no one would, uh, you know, um, like to approach or go near him. That was in the later time when he finished his prophetic career. That was in the later period. Anyway, Allah said, "Fastajabina Allah." We gave him answer. فَكَشَفْنَا مَا بِهِ مِنْ ضُرٍ And we have removed all the harms that he was afflicted with. وَآتَيْنَاهُ أَهْلَهُ وَمِثْلَهُمْ مَعَهُ We gave him his family and the like of which in blessings. رَحْمَةً مِنْ عِنْدِنَا As a mercy from our side, we gave him everything since he did this dua. So if anyone is suffering from illness, read this dua. Which is in Surah Al Anbiya, again Surah Al Anbiya, verse number 84. Surah Al Anbiya, verse number 80, 83 and 84. Wa Ayyub, 83, the dua is in 83. Wa Ayyub, Oh Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa think of Ayyub alayhi salam. When he uh, called his Lord, Anni Masani Allah, O Allah, harm has, has touched me, harm has came to me, harm has afflicted me. Anni Masani Allah, wa anta arhamur rahimin, and you are the most merciful. Our ulama say, if you have sin, skin diseases, this dua is best for it. If anyone reads it seven times, and can breathe and uh, you know some ulama says if you can get a cup of water and you read this dua 
and you drink it, Allah will give you cure. This is one of the reasons that Allah can give you cure. And as mentioned by many other scholars, So we have to read the dua, Rabbi inni masaniya dhurru wa anta arhamur rahimin. That dua. Anni masaniya dhurru wa anta arhamur rahimin. Oh Allah, harm has come to me. Wa anta arhamur rahimin. You are the most merciful. Look at the discipline that Ayyub alayhi salam shows towards Allah. He didn't say, Allah, you may forgive me. You may cure me. You give me, you cure me my disease and give me my health back. He didn't say that. He said, Oh Allah, definitely I'm afflicted by harms. You are the most merciful. That's it. When he read that one, فَاسْتَجَبِنَا لَهُ We gave him jawab, we gave him answer. فَكَشَفْنَا مَا بِهِ مِنْ ضُرٍ We have removed all the harms from him and we gave him his family and children and wealth back. رَحْمَةً مِنَّا As a mercy from us. So why should he be bothered about your sickness? If you're concerned in sickness, you read this dua. If you're concerned in sorrow, read this dua. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-dhalimin. If your concern is fear, read, Hasbun Allah wa ni'ma al-wakeel. And finally, if you are afraid of people who would cheat you, or oh, somebody going to do a harm to me, or oh, she may do this to me, he may do this to me, I don't know what's going to happen. If you are, عَجِبْتُ لِي مَنُبْتُ لِي بِالْبَكْرِ مِنَ النَّاسِ if you're concerned, these people will um, would um, deceive you, they will cheat you. If that is your case, then don't people see that Allah said about a man from the family of Fir'aun at the time of Musa a man from the family of Fir'aun believed. We know Fir'aun's wife, Asiya radiallahu anha, had believed, and there was another man who believed. Because when Fir'aun and his ministers were plotting against Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, why should you kill Musa alayhi salatu wasalam? He just say that Allah is one, worship him. But if you go and harm him, and if Musa alayhi salam is true, you will have to suffer. But if Musa alayhi salam is wrong, and you don't do anything to him, leave him and his business. Anyway, leave Musa alayhi This was his advice. Then they realized, oh, this man is siding with Musa alayhi They wanted to kill him. Then that man, he read a dua. وَأُفَوِّلُ أَمْرِي إِلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بَصِيرٌ بِالْعِبَادِ وَأُفَوِّلُ أَمْرِي إِلَى اللَّهِ I leave my case to Allah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ بَصِيرٌ بِالْعِبَادِ Allah is definitely watching over His people. Over his slaves, Allah is watching over anyone, everyone. I leave my case to Allah. So you don't have to be worried about your manager, your supervisor, your boss. If you're doing your job correctly, and if somebody is plotting against you for no reason, out of hasad, jealous, jealousy, or hatred, or any other things, read this dua, which is in Mufabbilu uh, Amri Allah, which is in, in Surah Ghafir. Verse number 44 and 45, Surah Ghafir. Verse number 44 and 45. Um, you can read it. فَسَتَذُكُرُونَ مَا أَقُولُ لَكُمْ وَأُفَوِّلُ أَمْرِي إِلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بَصِيرٌ بِالْعِبَادِ فَوَقَاهُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِ مَا مَكَرُوا وَحَاقَ بِآلِ فِرْعَوْنَ سُوءُ الْعَذَابِ Surah Ghafir. The man, the Mu'min al Fir'aun, he is known in history, Mu'min al Fir'aun, the believer from the family of Fir'aun. He was a Mu'min. He said, فَسَتَذُكُرُونَ مَا أَقُولُ لَكُمْ You will remember what I told you. Not today, not in this world. A time will come, you may remember me, what I'm talking to you. فَسَتَذُكُرُونَ مَا أَقُولُ لَكُمْ وَأُفَوِّلُ أَمْرِي إِلَى اللَّهِ I leave my case to Allah. Whatever you're plotting against me, to harm me, I leave it to Allah. He may protect me. Inna Allah basirun bil ibad. Definitely Allah is watching over his slaves. When he said that, what did Allah say? فَوَقَاهُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِ مَا مَكَرُوا Allah protected him from all the cheating, all the, all the plots that was made against him. 
Allah protected him. And bitter punishment, bitter punishment, you know, uh, was sent down to Pharaoh and his family. So if your concern is people, read. After every difficulty, there is an ease. After every difficulty, there is an ease. So, um, to your Lord, you return in humility and wholeheartedly. And when you finish something, don't go and say, I have nothing to do. No, you have to do something that will benefit you in this life and in the life hereafter. Not like going on games, wasting time. I think games, more adults are addicted to games, you know. You can see on flights, when you, when you travel, you can see people all take their mobiles out and go on playing. Just like kidding. So most importantly, we should think of how we would spend our time um, in a nice way. We have to make a program how we would spend our time for our kids, for our youngsters, our students and for grown-ups, you know, rather than wasting time. This is the danger of the time people are wasting time, not using it, just killing time. They don't know what to do. So rather than, and time is the most precious thing a man is ever given. We are lahabats, we are what we are in reality, we are seconds. We as a whole, we are few seconds. When the seconds are gone, we say, oh that man has gone, expired. What does it mean? Your time is up. So we are our time and time is the most important thing that we will be asked about. Uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would anyone to move even a step until he's asked of four things. Right? And jasadihi fi ma abila. Allah will ask you about your body. Where did you destroy it? Fi ma abila. Where did you spoil it? Your body, Allah gave you health. Allah gave you Strength, what do you use that for? In halal or in haram? In pleasing Allah or in pleasing shaitan? Allah will ask you about your age. Where did he spoil it? Your age. So don't worry if somebody is living up to 60 years. The question for him is about 60 years. Someone died at the age of 30, he will be asked only for that age, not more. And Allah will ask you about your youth, if your young age. How did you spend that one? This is interesting. Allah is asking you about your whole age and um, your age, your lifespan. And again, there is a subordinary question about the youth. How did you spend this, this time? The amazing, the struggling time of the, your, your age, how did you spend that? Did you listen to Allah? Did you spend more time listening to Quran? Or you spend more of your time listening to you know, music? What did you do? Allah has given you strength. Did you use it for Allah? وَعَنْ مَالِهِ مِنْ أَيْنَ اكْتَسَبَهُ وَفِيمَ أَنْفَقَهُ And Allah will ask you about your wealth. Where did you gain your money and where did you spend it? So without answering these four, we won't be able to لَا تَزُولُ قَدَمَا عَمِدٍ حَتَّى يُسْأَلْ عَنْ أَرْبَعَ A slave of Allah will never be able to move his leg until he's been asked of these four things. So we have to get our answers ready about your whole life. Your youth about your body and about your money. What do you earn? Is it from halal source, legitimate source, or is it from haram? So we have to think about how we spend our time. When you finish something, stand up, strive hard to do something better. Don't sit idle. Don't be lethargic. And to your Lord, return wholeheartedly. Return to your Lord.
Submit to you, your problems in front of Allah. Give in, be in the company of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will experience amazing peace. The time you do dhikr, la ilaha illallah, or you say sallallahu ala muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or the time you say subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa allahu akbar, the time your tongue is wet by the invocations and supplications to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be feeling an amazing peace in your heart. You don't get it when you watch your TV and you watch, you follow up your series. No, never. Or oh, listen to music, you will never get it. You get peace by the remembrance of Allah, bi dhikrillah tatma'innul khuloob, bibah. No, it is by the remembrance of Allah that we would get peace of mind. Nothing else. Impossible. Because you, you are not your body itself, you have a soul within it. You have a ruh. The soul, min amdi rabbi, is the amazing creation of Allah. And our soul is long to get connected with Allah. The time you disconnect your soul, you don't get peace of mind. People who drink, you go for fornication, this and that. They go after their bodily passions. They are never satisfied. They are longing for more and more and more until they die in sins. But a believer, when he controls his bodily passions, he submits himself in front of Allah and he thinks of God for any action, whatever he speaks and does, he's thinking of Allah. Such a man or a woman would experience an amazing peace. What is that? You are satisfying your soul, your ruh within you. When you satisfy your soul, you are connected with Allah. Allah bi dhikrillah. Know that. Learn it. Bi dhikrillah. It is by the remembrance of Allah. Tatumakinul qulu. That the hearts will get either salvation, the hearts will get comfort and peace. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whenever we are afflicted with any type of calamities, we would ask Him that He would grant us immense patience that we can bear it. And we ask Allah to remove all the hardships from our lives and make our lives easy. And if there is any qala, the divine destiny that can never be removed, is such a destiny is ordained by Allah, that Allah would grant us you know, patience to suffer.